Hello, I'm Dr. Guy Yatros, one of the founders here of Dental Sleep Solutions. Thanks for tuning in to Dental Sleep Medicine Insider Magazine. You know, a lot of you have heard us uh, talk over the years about how dental sleep is a, is, a, is a part of your business you can start doing in your offices and doesn't require a whole lot of financial investment. And that's still true. But with that being said, I'll have to tell you, I'm really excited. I got one of my, my, my newest toy. I haven't had a, a dental toy in many years. And uh, I now am the proud owner of a OP300. CBCT. It's an instrumentarium unit that I'm, I tell you, it's really changed the way I'm doing dental sleep in my practice. Uh, a lot of the things that uh, I took for granted before, trying to guess about airway, guess about nasal patency, guess about TMJ issues, we can now tell a lot more information with my CBCT unit. Uh, you can see it makes a lot of cool noises, it impresses the patients when we do it. We have a full field of view. If you're going to get one of these units, you want one that you can you know, sit down and, and, and look at the entire airway and you can see the kind of images you can get and we can see what we call the minimal cross-sectional area. Uh, we can see incredible things like this person here who's, whose nose has obviously been, been damaged in some ways and it also has a, a small airway as you can see. And that may look familiar as you look at me here because uh, that's my image there and we can see what's going on with my nose and the fact that I'm having some, some uh, concerns that I'm probably going to address down the road. So how do I use this in my practice? Well, again, what are we looking for when we come to dental sleep medicine? What are, what are the things that we, we're trying to analyze anatomically? We're looking at the size of the tongue, the neck size, retronathia, where is the hyoid bone in, in relationship to the mandibular arch, uh, the volume of the airway. Uh, we could do that with cells, but we can only get one dimension. Now we can get the uh, minimal cross-section area of the airway, tonsils, adenoids, oropharyngeal crowding, Tissue collapsibility really is the only fa factor that we can't tell uh, in, in the body position with, with the CBCT imaging. Um, how I use this in my office uh, is, is every patient that we see for dental sleep medicine. Again, if you're going to get a unit, you want one that uh, captures the entire airway from uh, the trachea up into the nasal cavities all the way back to the TMJs because we're wanting to evaluate them. I really feel this is a game changer in a lot of ways in my practice because there's a lot of indications. For newer dentists to dental sleep medicine, I think one of the biggest things that it does is it can help you with your screening process. A lot of patients are resistant to uh, getting a, a sleep test or they want to be able to see what, the, what, we, what we see when we're going on. And when we have a, a situation like this where you can see a narrow airway versus an open airway, uh, as you look at the, the, the two uh, photographs here, and what we can even do is color that for a patient and show, look, we're looking for a big open airway. Here you are, a wide awake. This is best your airway is going to get. If we see something that looks like this with the airway being narrow, uh, we have something we call the minimal cross-sectional airway. And as we look at those uh, side by side, we can see the differences. And the patient can readily see uh, why they may be more susceptible. It can help us uh, with gathering the information to see if they, we think that they're at risk for sleep disorder breathing and get the test. We can even look at some numbers from some tests showing that a minimal cross-section airway of less than 110 uh, millimeters is, is uh, something we might want to be concerned as a risk factor for sleep disorder breathing. So how do I use this mostly in my practice because most of my patients have, have already been diagnosed is I want to be able to look for some things that maybe I couldn't see before. Uh, unless you're more talented than me and be able to get a mirror back behind the soft palate and look for adenoid tissue or you want to use a nasal scope, we, do, we are now seeing patients that, wow, they have some hyper, uh, uh, hy hy hypertrophied uh, 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 adenoid tissue that can affect whether these dental devices may or may not be successful. So as we're screening our patients and we're, we're trying to make a decision as to whether a dental device is, is going to be successful for them, we want to look at things like their turbinates. So how are we going to see images of these uh, of their airway and we're looking for big black open airway on their noses and uh, we see something that looks like this with the, the airway uh, the obvious the deviated system but as you look at the one side with the black openings you can see uh, a lot of air can go through one side but the other side not on this particular patient and that patient will have a very likely uh, uh, more difficult in, in adapting to a dental device or at the very least we want to know about this so we may select a dental device that will be more applicable to that patient, allowing maybe some uh, oral breathing as, uh, as a mouth opening as one of the options. Uh, we're moving the jaw joint to, a, to a, a forward position and keeping it there all night. We're putting a little bit of strain on the TMJ and we certainly want to see things like this. 
Uh, if we didn't have an image of this patient before and we've, we find out that, uh, that they had degenerative joint disease, wouldn't we like to know that prior to doing uh, our mandibular advancement device or dental sleep therapy? Uh, so we're looking for fossil changes, we're looking for uh, abnormalities in the jaw joints. And one of the reasons I was resistant to this over the years was that, you know, the, the radiation involved. And uh, so, you know, we would take CEPHs and different things to look at the jaw joints and uh, other ways of evaluating the nose. But here's the thing that really convinced me of this, is now a full uh, airway, uh, a 13 uh, by 15 uh, uh, image, can show everything we need, even show the teeth to an enough degree that we're, we're happy to, to be able to say that, that, that the teeth are stable enough for a dental device. And we're looking at what's called 32 microsieverts of uh, radiation, which is barely more than a digital pan. A digital pan's 20, uh, so I mean, it's in the same ballpark. It's far, far less than our old FMXs we used to take. And so we're just getting so much more information now than we used to. Uh, with uh, far less radiation than we used to even give our patients for just a traditional full mouth series. So uh, I think it's a great instrument to have in your practice. Uh, it can be a, an integral part of, of doing a better job of dental sleep medicine. And you know, insurance covers this. We're starting to build medical insurance so we can get some extra um, uh, contributions from the third party payers. I, I believe you're really doing the standard of care if, you, if you're doing these on your patients. And I also have found it's helping me with my referrals to my medical community, uh, my ENTs in particular. And uh, it's overall becoming a very profitable investment. Uh, you should consider uh, looking at adding CBC to your practice. A lot of you have it already for or thinking about getting it for implants and other uses. And it's just yet another reason why this technology is really growing in dentistry. Thanks a lot for uh, reading uh, this episode of Dental Sleep Medicine Insider Magazine. And uh, from us here at Dental Sleep Solutions and DS3 Software, have a great day.